Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on experimental techniques. In this video, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to discuss uh, the voltage clamp and how the voltage clamp works and what it can be used to do, basically. So the voltage clamp is the topic for this video. And this was a technique that was uh, really pioneered by Hodgkin and Huxley. They didn't actually invent it. It was invented prior to them, but they made it useful. They made it into what it is today. So, what we're going to talk about is a few of the experiments that Hodgkin and Huxley did uh, long, long ago, basically. Uh, well, in the 19... Uh, I think it was 1940s, maybe, Hodgkin and Huxley were doing their experiments. And basically, they did experiments on the squid giant axon. And they basically uncovered most of what we know about the action potential today. So, the reason they were working with the squid giant axon is in the name, pretty much. The squid giant axon is basically a absolutely massive great axon of a neuron. So, squids have these absolutely enormous neurons that you can actually see. Um, with the naked eye, basically, and that's incredibly helpful because um, it means that you can s actually do experiments on them quite easily. Because if you if you've got something that you can see, then it's quite easy to do an experiment with it. Whereas if you're dealing with things that you can't see with the naked eye, then it's more difficult. So that's why they use the squid giant axon simply because it is massive. Okay, so this this represents a squid giant axon. Okay. Right, and now what I'm going to explain is the principle of what a uh, voltage clamp is, how it works, basically. And the whole idea is that you hold the voltage constant across the membrane, and you look at, um, at well, basically, the whole aim of what, of what the voltage clamp is trying to do is you're trying to look at current moving across the membrane, basically. So, for instance, when an action potential actually happens, um, voltage-gated sodium channels in the uh, membrane of the uh, neuron are going to open, and they're going to allow sodium ions to move into the cell, i.e. you're going to get a current of positive charge moving into the cell. So, what we, what Hodgkin and Huxley wanted to be able to do was measure that current moving into the cell, and the voltage clamp is a way of doing that. So this is the principle of what you do. Okay, you take an electrode and you stick it inside um, the um, the axoplasm, if you like, of the axon. So axoplasm is just a is just a fancy word meaning the cytoplasm within the axon of the neuron. So you stick an electrode into the axoplasm of the squid giant axon. Now, what happens when you stick an electrode into the axoplasm is that uh, the electrical potential that this electrode is at will be the same as the electrical potential that the axoplasm is at. So, the electrical potential that the axoplasm is at we'll call the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment of this neuron. Now, what we're also going to be interested in is what the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment is. Now, we basically decide what the electrical potential of the extracellular uh, fluid is because we are sticking our neuron into, um, into, a into a bath, basically. We've taken this neuron out of the poor squid and uh, we've put it in like a, a um, you know, we've put it in a little sort of petri dish and it's now in, a, in some fluid that we've put there. So we can decide completely what the electrical potential of the extracellular uh, fluid is. So we'll set that equal to zero volts, basically. Now you can't really set anything to zero volts, but we will, um, we will, um, we will pretend that we can, basically. So we'll say that um, the electrical potential is actually zero volts. You can get very, very close to zero volts. Right, so let's say that our extracellular fluid has z electrical potential zero uh, volts. Okay, therefore, the electrical potential difference across this membrane, i.e. the voltage, uh, well, the electrical potential difference from extracellular to intracellular, 
basically that's going to be the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment subtract the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment. So it's just going to be equal to the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment. So what I mean by this electrical potential difference across this membrane is if I have a little man who measures electrical potential in the extracellular compartment and then he moves into the intracellular compartment and measures electrical potential there, Basically, how much has the electrical potential changed for this little man from moving from the extracellular to the intracellular compartment? And basically, it's going to have changed by um, the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment subtract the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment. So, let's say, for instance, the electric, uh, electrical potential of the intracellular compartment was uh, plus 50 millivolts, maybe. Uh, then, if I move from extracellular to intracellular, I will have gone up by f plus 50 millivolts, so the voltage should be plus 50 millivolts. If, on the other hand, the electrical potential of the intracellular is negative 70, then the difference in going from extracellular to intracellular is that you've gone down by 70 millivolts, basically. So, again, that works all nicely. So basically the voltage difference across this membrane from going from extracellular to intracellular is just going to be equal to the electrical potential of that intracellular compartment. Right, okay, now you want to try and fix the electrical potential across the membrane because if you fix the electrical potential across the membrane then when current comes in through these voltage-gated sodium channels something in this apparatus will have to change. Some the, This apparatus will have to conduct current for it uh, in order to balance the current that's moving through the channels and not uh, change the electrical potential differences. Uh, so, um, you can measure that current, basically. Okay, so we stick this electrode into the axoplasm, and then what we do is we also put an electrode in, um, the, um, in this uh, extracellular fluid here. Okay, now, what we do is we uh, put them through an, am an electrical um, amplifier, basically. So we put this, oh sorry, we put this into what's known as an electrical amplifier, which is given this, um, this um, triangle symbol. And basically, this is known as an electrical uh, differential amplifier. But in this case, we're not actually going to amplify the signal at all. So I'll explain exactly what this does electrical differential amplifier and basically uh, what this is going to do is it has one positive feed and one negative feed and what it does is it has another wire coming out and it looks at these two wires that are coming in and basically it um, it looks at the electrical potential difference between the electrical potential of this wire and the electrical potential of this wire and it creates an electrical potential on this wire that's equal to the electrical potential difference between these two. Okay, so that's what an amplifier does. It has two wires going into it. Uh, so let's say this is wire 1 and this is wire 2. This is the one that I've plugged into the positive feed and this is the one I've pl plugged into the negative feed. So what it will do is it will take the electrical potential of wire 1, which I said was this one, uh, I will take the um, electrical potential of the wire that's going into the positive feed. In fact, I maybe should put that. The electrical potential of the wire going into the positive feed. And then it will subtract off the electrical potential of the wire going into the negative feed. So that's why this is called the positive feed and the negative feed. Because basically, you're going to, te you're going to take the difference... Uh, in electrical potential, you get because you're looking at the electrical potential difference between these two wires. But there's two ways you could calculate the electrical potential difference. Either you could take the electrical potential of this wire going into the positive feed and subtract off the electrical potential of the wire going into the negative feed, or you could take the electrical potential of the wire going into the negative feed and subtract off the electrical potential going into the positive feed. Okay, um, so those would give you the exact negative and of each other, basically. The two answers you will get will be the negative of each other. Okay, so, um, which one, which one do we mean, basically? Well, 
you put the negative sign, basically. The one you subtract off is the one that's going into the negative feed, basically. So this is the what is counted as the electrical potential difference between those two wires now. And basically, what it will do is it will make this output wire have an electrical potential equal to this electrical potential difference between these two wires. So E plus minus E negative. So remember what this means. This means the electrical potential difference. If you had a little man measuring the electrical potential of this wire going into the negative feed and he moved onto this wire going into the positive feed, what would be the electrical potential difference he feels? What would be the difference between them? Well, that's going to be the one that he's moved to. Subtract the one that he moved from. Okay, so that... That's what this electrical differential amplifier does. It looks, it takes in two wires, works out what is the electrical potential difference between them, and then creates uh, a wire which has that electrical potential difference as its electrical potential. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.